Yes, so yesterday the Australian Transport Safety Bureau handed down its final report into that fatal angel flight crash which occurred in June 27, just a couple of kilometres past Mount Gambier Airport, which claimed the lives of all three on board. Uh, There was a lot in this report. It was quite lengthy. It addressed not just the particulars of this crash, but also took a further look back over the safety record of these types of flights and made some findings, um, some very particular findings in terms of what it sees as the uh, the increased risk of what it says is involved in these types of flights. It found in its analysis that community service flights conducted by the charity Angel Flight Australia had a fatal accident rate more than seven times higher than other private flights. You're about to hear from Greg Hood, who is the Chief Commissioner of the Australian Transport Safety Bureau, addressing the media uh, and answering questions relating to this investigation. The pilot did not have the qualifications nor the experience for flight in these conditions. The ATSB found that after takeoff, the aircraft deviated to the left, entered low cloud, caused spatial disorientation and a loss of control. Uh, the aircraft was airborne for around about 70 seconds prior to the impact with terrain, two kilometres from Mount Gambier Airport, and killed all three on board. The ATSB previously investigated another triple fatality accident at Nil in Victoria in 2011. Earlier ATSB research has established that private flying has a fatal accident rate per flight that is eight times higher than commercial charter operations and 27 times higher than low capacity scheduled airline flying. During the course of the investigation, our analysis of this accident and data from the past decade of angel flight operations highlights that passengers on these flights and their volunteer pilots are being exposed to much higher levels of risk compared with other types of aviation operations. The ATSB's analysis has demonstrated that those flights conducted for Angel Flight are actually less safe than other private operations and more likely than other private operations to experience fatalities. It's almost certain that this higher safety occurrence rate is due to the exposure of these flights to different operational risk factors when compared to private operations. The ATSB also determined that commercial airline flights are reasonably available for around two-thirds of the flights historically conducted for Angel Flight. Taking into account passenger needs, at least half of these commercial flights could be suitable at comparable or cheaper cost to the charity than the fuel reimbursed to private pilots by Angel Flight Australia. The ATSB found that the Angel Flight organisation did not pressure pilots to fly in conditions beyond their capability. The ATSB considers that measures must be undertaken to improve the risk controls for this type of operation. The ATSB also issued a formal safety recommendation to Angel Flight Australia recommending that it consider paying for commercial flights where they're available to transport its passengers. As a charity established to transport rural and regional people with limited financial means to medical appointments, the ATSB considers that Angel Flight could and should include the fact that commercial passenger flights have a lower safety risk to passengers than private operations as a factor when it organises their flights. On the day of the Mount Gambier accident, suitable and cost comparable airline flights were available. So we're unable to determine in the investigation uh, to what extent that he uh, uh, he checked the weather forecast, but obviously in conditions of low cloud and fog uh, it might have been uh, quite fine in, uh, in when he departed Murray Bridge from Mount Gambier and uh, and you can obviously fly uh, clear of cloud quite happily on top of fog, um, but obviously to land you, you uh, would have to either wait for the fog to have burnt off or, uh, uh, or found a hole, I suppose, if you like. And uh, uh, in the course of the investigation, and you'll see it in the investigation report, uh, in his low-level manoeuvring at, uh, at Mount Gambier, the closed-circuit uh, television identified that uh, he was manoeuvring in certainly reduced visibility conditions. So, so the pilot was uh, 78 years of age, as my understanding, had been flying for two and a half years, and had amassed a, a flying time of about 530 hours, and uh, was only um, qualified uh, under the CASA regulations to fly under visual flight rules. So uh, that basically, uh, in layman's language, means that you, you have to fly clear of cloud in fine weather, if you like. Um, so he didn't hold a, a night rating or an instrument rating, only the basic uh, rating to fly in, in visual meteorological conditions.
could this happen again? Uh, so we're very hopeful that the controls that are implemented by Angel Flight Australia and, and the additional measures taken by the Civil Aviation Safety Authority uh, will prevent a recurrence. Is it ultimately the pilot's decision? Is it ultimately CASA's responsibility to ensure that that person can fly in those conditions? Or is it Angel Flight's responsibility to make sure that they have a pilot looking after their patients that can fly in appropriate conditions? I suppose it's all of the above. Um, I mean, uh, certainly uh, as, as a pilot myself, I, I fully accept the fact that uh, I have a responsibility to make sure that uh, the weather conditions are, are suitable for the flight that I'm undertaking. But of course, uh, you know, were I to be uh, flying for an operator, uh, the operator must also ensure that there are certain uh, guidelines or training in place to make, uh, to make sure that I'm able to operate safely. And of course, you have to do that in the context of a, a regulatory suite. So. Um, it's all a balance between the three. That's Greg Hood, who is the Chief Commissioner of the Australian Transport Safety Bureau, and that is some of what he had today to say in delivering that final report and its findings yesterday into that fatal Angel Flight crash. Now, um, Angel Flight has sent out quite a lengthy statement in response to this report handed down yesterday. As I say, lengthy, it is about three type pages, and I'm not able to read the entirety of it, but to summarise that uh, Angel Flight's response to this report is to say that it has coordinated free flights for more than 100,000 disadvantaged rural Australians whose only other option to attend city hospitals for specialist treatment is ground transport. These people cannot afford to com commercial air travel, which is more often than not unavailable from their hometown. The statement from Angel Flight says that the AUTSB offered no safety recommendations to pilots flying light aircraft in bad weather. The rules implemented by the Civil Aviation Safety Authority were not directed to the cause of the 2017 accident or any other accident in the community benefit sector and the ATSB has not given any support for those rules save and except for that requiring pilots to write community benefit flights up in their logbooks and note fact on flight plans. Uh, it is regrettable says Angel Fly, that the Bureau made no relevant safety recommendations nor gave any guidance whatsoever to pilots flying in poor weather conditions, the cause of the accident. It would have been of benefit to the flying community had the ATSB focused on these aspects of the accident. Just further on um, down the statement, Angel Flight says... The safety message raised, induction training and safety management systems, together with a pilot mentoring program, had already been implemented by the charity prior to the ATSB report and recommendations. Angel Flight takes and has taken a very serious and proactive approach to improving safety. It will, will continue to do so. Angel Flight will continue to urge CASA to improve its human factors training in the pre-licensing stage of training, in addition to the refresher courses now often offered. Uh, it's just going on further, and I won't read the whole statement because, as I say, it is quite um, quite considerably lengthy. Angel Flight says, Angel Flight has coordinated more than 46,000 flights for the purpose of travelling to, returning from, and carrying rural Australians to the city for non-emergency medical appointments. The ATSB has excluded more than half of these flights when assessing accident rates, with the result being to substantially increase the alleged statistical accident rates. Up next, we are going to talk about some of those changes that CASA has implemented on these types of flights um, since this crash, but also some legislative changes that have been flagged about uh, what kind of things CASA considers when it does bring in new safety standards. This week is Science Week across the ABC. Across the ABC. This year, how can we stay younger for longer? Don't miss our two-part catalyst special for the body and the brain. We can all help our cells and our bodies be healthier for longer. Test your creativity with our brain-teasing challenge. And go online to learn about the science of staying younger for longer. <laughs> science Week. This week on ABC Radio, TV, iView and abc.net.au slash scienceweek. Now, it was after two fatal flights involving Angel Flights, this one in Mount Gambier, an earlier one in Western Victoria, that the Civil Aviation Safety Authority, or CASA, brought in some new minimum safety standards for community flights. Those are the ones that are conducted like charities, uh, like Angel Flight. Uh, aviators have since hit back at these changes. Say they, well, they say they're an example of CASA being heavy-handed and over-regulating. Uh, they wouldn't have prevented these particular crashes. But at the moment, Parliament is debating a bill that would require CASA to consider the economic and cost impact of setting new safety standards. One senator who has supported it is Rex Patrick from the Central Alliance, who joins me this morning. Good morning and welcome to the program. 
Good morning and to your listeners. Now, in the past, you have um, spoke critically of, of the regulations that CASA has implemented after this particular crash for community service flights. So these are minimum standards. In, in light of yesterday's report, uh, you know, has that changed your position in any way? No, not at all. Look, Angel Flight offers an invaluable service to, to families in regional and remote areas uh, that are burdened with either disabled uh, um, family members or people who are ill. Uh, we can't afford to shut down the service. Uh, the, the findings of the ATSB in this instance uh, you know, are based around some very narrow statistics and uh, simply don't recognise what happens to families in remote communities who need help and in many instances, the only way they get help is through through organisations like Angel Flight. The report from the ATSB uh, say, says that passengers on these particular fl- these particular flights and their pilots are being exposed to much higher levels of, of risk compared with other types of aviation operations. Do you accept that that, that finding is correct? No, look, the, it, it's a case of lies, damn lies, and statistics. As has as was mentioned in the preamble. Uh, the ATSB only used a, a limited data set. They didn't include pre-positioning flights. Look, you, you need to understand that if CASA and the ATSB were running our roads, they would shut down the roads between uh, Mount Gambia and Adelaide. That's the way they think. Uh, they have managed over time to basically kill off general aviation in this country, which has made it harder for the entire aviation sector. These flights are fundamentally safe. Look, I'm mindful of the tragedy that's taken place in Mount Gambia, and I'm very sorry to the families that, uh, you know, uh, that, that the family that was involved. But we cannot escape the fact that there are places in South Australia, right across Australia, where you simply can't get a commercial flight. Uh, you don't get a flight that will suit treatment times. People who are on um, uh, on chemo. Um, uh, treatment uh, involving multiple trips to the city, uh, disabled children uh, needing assistance with, uh, with with various different programs. Uh, ATSB and and CASA have uh, just about regulated pilots out of the industry. If regulation is not is that the way to essentially ensure safety or to to set new safety standards? And what does need to be the answer? If it's not more regulations, then what is it? Well, OK, you talked about legislation. In fact, the Parliament has just passed a bill relating to CASA and basically making sure that uh, as well as considering safety as the primary concern, and that's something I do support, they must consider the, the health of the industry. We've got a situation now where if a pilot were to load all of the regulations that CASA imposes upon them into a Cessna aircraft, it simply couldn't take off. Uh, that's the crazy situation that we've got ourselves into. Uh, pilots in the in the United States in much busier uh, airspace do not face the same sort of regulatory imposition that uh, that they do here in Australia. Speaking to Centre Alliance Senator Rex Patrick this morning, so w- with this new amendment, what burden does this put on CASA if it wants to set new standards in the future? Well, it just, it just means that it needs to be reasonable in the way in which it approaches safety, recognising that uh, you know, there, there is, uh, uh, you know, there's always risks with flying. If you want to stop aircraft accidents, just don't let any, anyone fly. That's an extreme position, of course. Um, they just need to be mindful of how they're conducting their business and making sure that when they consider uh, the operations of air, or air operations in Australia, that they do so in a manner uh, that also considers the health of the industry as well. Is there a danger if CASA is considering, for example, the economic impact or the impact of the industry in its decisions on setting safety standards that they will be less safe because uh, you know, should not safety be the ultimate and, and only concern? Uh, it, it is certainly the predominant concern, but it is not the only concern. It's for the same reason that when your listeners jump into a car, they're mindful of safety, they're mindful of the, the safety features of the car, the road rules, the need to have police, uh, but there's always a risk that that does not stop people jumping into cars and using that to uh, go about their daily lives and to generate business. And the problem we've got at the moment is that we've got a uh, an organisation that is focused only on safety without appreciating all of the benefits that flow from aviation activities.
Now, I know that there have been some attempts or moves in the past months to uh, to overturn, essentially, or to set aside the, the regulations that CASA brought in following uh, this particular crash uh, in regards to community flights. Is that something that is, is likely to continue? So Centre Alliance has lodged a disallowance for the changes that are being imposed on community service flights like uh, Angel Flight. And the reason that, uh, that we've done that is because uh, for example, the, the regulatory change that has been uh, imposed or, or, or put in place suggests that there ought to be a minimum uh, uh, in command time for pilots of 250 hours. Uh, now, Angel Flight already have that as a requirement in their uh, uh, in their selection process for pilots, and indeed in this accident, uh, as was mentioned by Greg Hood. The pilot had 530 hours. In the previous action accident in Melbourne, Victoria, uh, I'm pretty sure the pilot had somewhere around about 900 hours. So we've got CASA imposing rules that simply would have had no effect on the outcome in those two particular flights. They're doing a similar thing in respect to aircraft maintenance, where they're placing an extra burden on, uh, on aircraft maintenance for these particular pilots. When in, uh, in, in the two incidents uh, that, that have occurred with Angel Flight, uh, neither of uh, those incidents involved any issue of maintenance. So it's regulation for the sake of regulation. It doesn't actually achieve anything. If those regulations were in place prior to those accidents, it would not have changed a thing. And I guess, Senator Patrick, that brings us back to that, that question. If regulation wouldn't have prevented these crashes, uh, what is the answer then? You know, Do we need to simply accept that people will make mistakes or is there something else that as an industry or as a government that can be done to, to try and prevent uh, accidents like this in the future? Well, I'm always happy for uh, the authorities to look at what occurred in particular incidents, and that's in fact what the ATSB have done, and they've done a very thorough analysis of the of the, the accident in, in this particular incident. Uh, flowing from that would be recommendations relating or stemming from uh, those accidents in particular, and uh, those sorts of recommendations indeed can be implemented, but that's not what's happening here. Uh, there's there's a, a push on by both ATNS, ATSB and CASA to uh, uh, basically regulate these guys out of business, and they do so much work for um, for regional communities in Australia. Their their service, the service they provide, is invaluable. Senator Patrick, thank you very much for coming on the program this morning. We do appreciate your time. Thank you very much. Centre Alliance Senator Rex Patrick speaking there. Up next, we're going to hear the thoughts from the aviation industry. Selena Green on ABC Southeast. Staying on this topic this morning, joining me this morning is the CEO of the Aircraft Owners and Pilots Association, Ben Morgan. Good morning to you. Good morning, Selena. Have you had a chance to have a look through through the ATSB's uh, report release yesterday? And what are your thoughts on, on some of their findings? Look, we're still working through that report at the moment, and as you can appreciate, there's a huge amount of information that we need to work through in technical detail. Uh, But at this stage, what I would like to say uh, is that whilst the report does deal with the the forensic aspects of the accident sequence uh, and outcome, it really does appear uh, to me that this report uh, veers quite outrageously off course into a realm of fantasy and make-believe. Uh, and I think that this report ultimately will do an enormous amount of damage to the credibility of the ATSB if it is not withdrawn and this investigation uh, started again. We just heard Senator Rex Patrick from Centre Alliance there question some of the data that the ATSB has used to, um, to in their assertion that passengers on these types of flights, these uh, commercial, uh, sorry, um, uh, charity type flights, are at a much higher risk uh, than other types of aviation. Do you agree with his uh, citation there that, uh, that that the data hasn't been assessed properly? This data has been incredibly manipulated. And I'll say that again very clearly. The data has been manipulated to produce an outcome to support a predetermined uh, course that both CASA and the ATSB chose uh, to travel on. Now, I understand the ATSB is supposed to be an independent uh, organisation, but I can't believe for the life of me that the ATSB has operated independently with this. It appears 
from what has taken place last year, that both CASA and the ATSB have been singing from a pre-organised hymn sheet. And what they seem to forget is that the industry are not fools. Pilots are not fools and the aviation industry will not be fooled. A cursory review of the accident report shows that the ATSB have decided to simply exclude data which would not support them in producing a finding which they have, uh, in my opinion, falsely presented uh, these community service flights as being more dangerous than ordinary general aviation. It's just simply not the case. Uh, and I'm aware that the Angel Flight Organisation has themselves uh, employed uh, or contracted some highly experienced and well-credentialed statisticians to review the industry data, and the results there are staggering. They're staggering because it shows that the accident and incident rate for the community service flight sector is no different to ordinary general aviation. Now, how have we gotten to a point where Australia's Accident uh, Transport Safety Bureau to produce a report that shows something entirely different when the data is very clear in saying that there is no difference. I think it's astounding, and I'll repeat it again. I think that this report ultimately will live to haunt the ATSB because this, this report is a huge hole in the side of their credibility, unfortunately. Will this, though, possibly come to, to haunt services like Angel Flight or the perception, public perception, that people have of, um, you know, th this type of aviation? I mean, what could this do to public perception, perceptions well, I, I, of services I, like this? Well, Selena, I'll tell you what I think that's going to happen now as a consequence of this report, and that is that the, the government has now fueled an enormous amount of resource behind the industry to see to it that this report is investigated that the way in which this report was put together is reviewed. Uh, and I have no doubt, absolutely no doubt in my mind, that what this has now done is has created an environment where there's going to be some significant questions asked of the processes involved in the investigation, the appointment of individuals to perform those investigations, the way in which the data was manipulated for these investigations. I think that this is going to create a problem for the government. I think that the Minister for Transport has a responsibility at this point in time uh, to come and sit with industry uh, and to listen to the, to the genuine concerns that the industry is putting forward in the fact that this report appears to lack credibility uh, and get this report withdrawn and get this investigation started again. Because this report does not serve uh, to, uh, uh, I guess, produce a, a result which in any way honours those that have tragically lost their lives. It in no way serves to honour the improvement of safety for the aviation industry because, as the Senator has uh, rightfully stated, and this is a fact, that the changes introduced by the Civil Aviation Safety Authority have nothing to do with the causes of this accident. Uh, and yet they've been rafted through in an attempt to make it look like CAS has done something when, in fact, they've done nothing at all. And that's the key in this. The safety regulator have done nothing. They've pulled the wool with the assistance of the ATSB over the eyes of the Australian public. The public should be incredibly uh, uh, concerned with what the ATSB has delivered. Uh, and I think that, as I've said, the Minister for Transport needs to withdraw this report. This, this investigation needs to be started again. It needs to be supervised. And if necessary, let's bring in some accident investigation experts from the United States or Canada or another country where they've got professional accident investigation uh, teams and let's have a, a joint investigation to get to the actual facts because this report is a credibility landmine. It's blown a hole in the side of the ATSB and I think it now leaves the ATSB in a position where they're really going to have to explain why they decided to manipulate the data and what were their motivations behind that. Ben Morgan, we're going to have to leave you there, though we are running out of time. We appreciate your time this morning.